Welcome to the Delling Pod. Before I announce this week's thrilling special guest, I just wanted to have a, a brief word to you, my very special and only listening friend. Um, all good things must come to an end, and the same is true of this podcast. No, I'm just teasing you. I'm not going to end the podcast. I think it's kind of an addiction for me, and I hope it's become an addiction for you as well. But I think we're going to have to put it on a different footing. I've been trying to come up with ideas of how to monetize the the podcast. Now, obviously, the special friend badges are are a fun thing, and I really appreciate those avatars of you who have bought your special friend badges and supported the, the podcast. But it's really not enough to put it on a solid financial footing. And I'll tell you why. I need to think of other ways of monetizing the podcast. Number one, I need to free my ass. And I think a lot of you understand what I'm talking about. This is a, a an increasingly hostile culture to people on the right side of the argument. And all, all the forces of the left are arrayed against us. And even the forces of the center, I'm afraid, uh, naming no names, are uh, are starting to become array, arrayed against us. They're, they're chickening out. And I need, I suppose, what you might call F-off money. I need protection so that I am beholden to nobody. That way I can carry on doing what I'm doing and just stick it to the man and not live in fear that I'm going to get cancelled any moment. So, number one, you're trying to protect me from from our many many enemies on the left, enabling me to do what I do better. Um, the second thing is, I think it, again, it's in your interest. The more, I, the freer I am, the better product I can I can offer to you. I mean, I, I'm I'm thinking of all manner of specials. I think in the future, I really want to do Dick and James go to Israel. I also want to do. I haven't told I told lots of this. I mean, this will have to be financed separately. But I would like to do Lawrence Fox and James Dullingpole go riding over the Andes on exciting horses because Lawrence is a is a rider and, and and so am I, and that would be fun. I mean, obviously, we're talking more money there. But anyway, I would like to um, ask your views on how I'm going to do this. Here is here is an idea. This is this is this is my idea so far. I think what I'm going to do is offer one half of the podcast free, so that people get a can get a a get a get a free taste of it every week, um, so that they're not totally deprived. But b obviously as as bait to to lure people in and 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 make them think. Well, if I've listened to the first half, I I don't want to miss out on the second half. And my plan is: tell me if I'm going wrong here. I want to paywall the second half. Um, I know other podcasters have done this, but I think that if I paywalled the second part of the podcast, I think, I like to hope that lots of you will think, well, James is worth supporting. And, and also I'd find it really annoying not being able to hear the second half of his podcast. Um, so I'm going to have a survey on the, on the website, dellingpoleworld.com, but I would really welcome any any emails you want to send me before then to the to the dellingpoleworld.com website. Um, and I'd like to hear from you things like, what would be a reasonable amount for me to charge per month? I mean, I'm thinking about $8 per month. That's what other other podcasters tend to, well, I mean, I've, I've looked at one who, one who charges that. I, I think that sounds a, a, a pretty reasonable amount. Um, also, what perks you'd like what uh, as, as a reward for your for your um generosity um for example i would definitely do once a month that thing where you can talk to me on the internet and i i answer all your questions i don't know what those are called but i live cast or something i do i do those i'm thinking of i thinking of special events obviously you'd you'd get access um, reduced ticket prices and advance notice of, of special events. I'm thinking of a, a much higher tier where I know some of you, for example, are hedge fund managers. And I know, I know you're, 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 you're quite tight, but at the same time, you would fork out for, it for, I don't know, maybe you could use me to entertain your clients. So, you know, how much, what's a, what's a, how much do I, do I need to charge not to, not to um, under underprice myself. You see what I mean? What what's a 
what's a good price for me to ask for that for for say you know if i come to dinner with you or something things like that i'm 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 just thinking of ways of making it work um what kind of things would you like dick to dick to design in form of merchandising i'll make sure obviously that whatever that whatever the the, the system i decide on that those of you who've already got special friend badges don't don't miss out sorry this is this is this is long and i'm thinking aloud here but i think it's really important we get this right i don't want to alienate you i really love every time i go to london now it's absolutely amazing almost every time i go to london i get on the tube uh or get off 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 at the station um off the off the the, the main line train and somebody says, love the podcast, or somebody removes an ear thing from their ear and says, just listening to your podcast. And it's really, I love that. I, I mean, this is, this is, of all the things I've done in my journalistic career, I think my relation with you, my special listening friends, has been the most satisfying thing that's ever happened to me. And I want, to, I want it to continue, but I think that, I hope you'll agree that if you support me and make me more free, it'll be good for all of us. Obviously, make me more rich as well. I'd like to be able to buy Magnifico or The Hunter one day. I'd like to be able to replace my um, four motion V, what is it, V6, um, you know, my, my golf that died recently. Stuff like that. You know, I, I, I want to be free. I want to I go and make good stuff for you and make you happy and we can all love each other and live happily ever after. So please... Tell me how I can do this better. Thank you very much. Now over to my this week's special guest. Thank you. I love Daily Poll. Go and subscribe to the podcast, baby. I love Daily Poll. I listen all the time. Subscribe with me. I love Daily Poll. Welcome to the, to the Daily Pod with I me, James Daily Poll, and. I know I say I'm I always say I'm excited about this week's special <laughs> guest. And um this week's special guest is knows I always say that because he's he's a regular listener. He's a, a, a very kind and generous helper of the of the podcast. He gives me he gives me tips on how to speak proper and and stuff like that. And well you do Brian, don't you? Do His I? name is is Brian Robinson and he's been on the podcast before and you're a a speaking coach, aren't you? you? I'm a speaking coach. Yeah, yeah exactly. And you and you are an ex, an ex actor, l- lovey. Yeah, uh, ex, yes. Very in terms of loveliness, very ex. Yes. Yeah, but you, but uh, but I imagine, did you, did you ever play the Dane? Uh, yes, I did. Did you? <laughs> did you really? How dare you ask me that? <laughs> yes, I, yes, I did. But it was a bit of a cheat. That was a hell of a cheat. Well, it was an abridged version. No, it wasn't the play of Hamlet. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. It was Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I was very young. I was, I, I, I'm, to this day, the youngest actor ever to have played Hamlet at the Old Vic and at the National. Really? Because they were both in the same place at the time. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't in Hamlet, it was in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern But that, 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 is, that is a good claim to, claim to fame. I, I imagine that you are... Um, you belong to that generation of actors that did rep and stuff and learned how yes. to speak, speak, yes. speaker diverse. Yes, speaker diverse. Yes. Did, did you ever get tuition? You didn't get taught by Cicely Berry or anything like that, did you? Uh, what in in ter- in terms of speaking verse? Yeah, speaking. Yeah, yeah as such, y- or, or uh, not specifically. Although the voice coach uh, at the National in my time, a wonderful woman called uh, Kate Fleming. Yeah. Um, I owe a huge amount to her. And in fact, a lot of the things that really irritate me about speakers on my blog, you know, I critique speeches. Yeah, yeah, you're, 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 you're good at that. Uh, am I? Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I, I enjoy, I, I actually, people, anyone remotely interested in speaking should, public speaking, should check out your, your blog. Because I like the way you go through various speeches that you found on the internet and you analyse them and, and you explain whether they're any good or not and why they're good and why they work and it's it's often counterintuitive like like earlier on you were we were talking about Brendan and Neil yes and we both love love Brendan that's that's a given but you were saying that one of the things that annoys you about Brendan's t- tell us the annoying thing about Brendan's podcast well annoying is stretching it a bit but I when he I can always tell in on his uh, podcast, yeah. 
when he is reading a script, which he tends, I mean, uh, there are always scripted bits about, you know, if you're enjoying this, tune in or subscribe, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but you can tell he's reading it because he over, -enun over enunciates. Yeah. Every word comes individually wrapped. Yeah. So if you are listening to this, then uh, do come and subscribe to this. And he doesn't speak like that. When he speaks normally, no. he speaks like this. Uh, well, not, it's, not, it's no, not, not. He doesn't, he doesn't speak in that, in that loveyish way, Brian, to be fair. Like this. <laughs> he doesn't. He, he, no, speak, well, he that, speaks that, more that like Brendan. That goes with this, yeah, this voice. Uh, please don't dwell on the voice. The but, voice. No, that's, <laughs> not, that's another thing. That is another thing that you try and teach people, not to become obsessed with their own voices. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yes. The last, the last thing you should be obsessed with, if you're making a speech or anything else at all, is anything to do with yourself. Yeah. You're the least important person there. It's the audience and it's the message. That's all you should concentrate on. And incidentally, if you are nervous, it's because you're thinking about yourself. Uh. My ex-boss, I've got a nasty bit of name dropping here, a guy by the name of Olivia, used to say that uh, nerves were a sign of vanity. You are far too concerned with what the audience was thinking of you. Uh, he actually said that. Uh, Lawrence Olivier. Can you do? Can you, you can't do a, a, a Lawrence Olivier in person. Uh, I, w I wouldn't. I wouldn't dream of it. Um, anyone who's worked in one of his companies, which I did, um, does a, a, an Olivier, and uh, do they? And they're normally pretty naff, and mine is as naff as any is. Okay. Well, I quite like naff impersonations. I'm sorry to disappoint us by not giving <laughs> us your naff Olivier. Are you sure I can't tempt you? Has anyone, has anyone ever told you what he used to call people in the company? No. If he didn't know your name, he called you Baby. Did he? Um, and if he did know you, he just stuck his, your name in front. So if it was, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, um, <sighs> Derek Jacoby, it would be Derek Baby. And uh, so if you just pass him the corridor, you say, morning, Sir Lawrence. Good morning, Baby. So so that, it, you called him Sir Lawrence, did you? Rather yes. Than, rather, not Larry or... Uh, no, I was not on Larry terms. But do you know what? I I wonder. I I mean, I'm a bit younger than you, but but I'm of a of a generation where the name Lawrence Olivier meant something, you know. But I'm wondering how many of our younger avatars, um, uh, special friend avatars, even give a toss about Lawrence Olivier. You know, it's a bit like we were talking the other week about cars and about the cars that you like tend to be the cars that you aspired to owning when you were in your 20s. And the same applies to very much, we were just talking a moment ago, to, to, to music. I mean, like, when I was growing up, people obsessed about Elvis. No one gives a toss about Elvis anymore, or at least no one, you know, they're, they're all dying off. But people, people who cared about Elvis Presley are really, really dying off. He's just like almost yeah, It's interesting that he there was... was huge for a while. I mean, yeah, he was gigantic. But my... Uh, I've got two sons who are... Uh, 40 and 41 and 38. Yeah. Uh, the older one went through an Elvis uh, period. I just I happened to have an album. I played it and he right. went crazy for him. Um, so he, he uh, all right, so that's, he's not a kid exactly, but no. the, a couple of, uh, well, a generation down, suddenly, I mean, they, he, these things sort of tend to have a, another go. Who was it that came up on Twitter the other day? Buddy Holly. Oh, but Buddy Holly's great. Oh, absolutely brilliant, yeah. But uh, uh, hey, hey, absolutely. Uh, Every day. Did. No, I can't do. I can't do. I can't do a Buddy Holly impersonation. Uh, but luckily, no, most of the listeners won't even have heard of Buddy Holly, so they won't know how shit no, my impersonation no. is. Anyway, the, Brian, we should talk. We were rambling, but maybe the rambling is a, is, a, is a good thing. But I'm sure there's 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 important shit we need to talk about. Well, yes. Someone round here is making a documentary. I saw on Twitter. Oh yeah, are you? Yeah, we, we we talked about it. We're going to talk about it here first, I guess. Yeah, I, I I am, and this has been this has been bubbling under for ages. I'm making a climate change documentary with the great Martin Durkin. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, a, a, a name to reckon with. No, it's good. Um, so, so you're not so, messing so, around, so, are you? No, Martin Durkin, who made the great global warming swindle, but that was that was a while ago, and. Although there have been a few sceptical moves, I mean, um, uh, Mark Morano has made, he's, he's just about to release another one, you know, Mark, Mark Morano, who, who runs the Climate Depot 
um, website in the US. Um, but I think that the time is ripe for a... Well, I mean, it, how would you put it? What's even riper than ripe? I mean, I mean, we're, we're, we're reaching the stage where, where the fruit's falling off the tree and being eaten by wasps. It's, well, that's it, because it, the wasps it's, are already on it. It's beyond, right. it's beyond it's ripe. Wrinkly. But will it work? I mean, the thing is, it's, it's like that uh, uh, Terminator... Every time you think it's dead, it comes alive. I mean, how the hell did it, A, survive Climate Gate? How the hell did it, did it survive every single projection that has been made in, yeah. in Al Gore's film? Not a single one of those things. Has, you know, if, if we were talking science, if you say, if we do this, that will happen, and it doesn't happen, and then it, the next one doesn't happen, and the next one doesn't happen, the next one, sooner yeah. or later you say, we've got to go back to the drawing board, but yeah. they don't. You've and that's got, the evidence as far as I'm concerned. It's not scientific, but political. You've got a hundred, <laughs> Prince, Prince Charles, no less, um, said that we had a hundred months to left to save the planet, and the hundred months elapsed, and lo... The, 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 the planet was was still here still and, they, going. And, and, they, and they keep doing this in, and in a way it's a sign of the, of their arrogance that they go on making these time specific predictions knowing that no one is ever going to help, hold them to account because that's that's how far advanced the scam is and how how it has permeated an entire culture I honestly think that my m movie will be more watched in America. Well, that's good because that's where the money is anyway. More watched in America than it is in in the UK, and I think probably we'll be pitching it at that because I'll tell you a sad story actually in 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 a moment. Um, that dog is annoying. Me. That's that's my special but friend. All those special, well, yeah, all those bloody canine special friends has been a real pain. <laughs> that's it's Daisy. Just, she's gorgeous. Well, it's it's been. You can hear its whopping tail early on, ruining this, ruining the sound. Now it's just thrown the microphone box on the. Um, yeah. When I wrote my book Watermelons, which is quite a while ago now, I mean, twenty twelve, I think I published it. Um, in fact, before that, uh, uh, Climate Gate. Climate Gate, I thought, was so damning of so-called climate science. Um, I mean, it's not really science. It's, it's not a hard science. It's, it's a social science, um, if that. Uh, One of your it's, guests it's, it's, said it's, it's nebulous. got science in the name, it's not science. It, that was Will Happer. He That's was, right. He That's was, right. He was quoting John Nash, I think, the guy who... Yeah. Correct, I remember. That's right. If you called it a science, it's not a I th science. I thought the time, wow, that's so true. It's, it was just brilliant. Yeah, so, so physics is a science. It's like studies. Any, any university studies. course that has studies in it is, is not worth looking at. Yeah, yeah. So when I made, uh, when, when, when the Climate Gate scandal broke, I thought, Really, it's over for for the greenies and the, for the climate industrial complex because how can they possibly go on when they have been exposed as torturing the data, data till it screams, um, uh, going on these massive climate junkets to, to, to exotic destinations while preaching hair shirt ideology. They were exposed in so many different ways from so many different angles that I thought, they're never going to be able to show their faces again. The emperor is wearing no clothes. And instead, what happens? They double down. It's, a, it's astonishing how they've survived. It's like Terminator. This thing won't die. It, it totally is. And it, it's, a, it's a function of the amount of money that is, that, that is being made, the, the, the number of snouts in the trough. And unfortunately, the financial sector, which was always kind of pretty complicit anyway... Um, is now totally in. They've they've gone. Mark Carney, for example, the the happily no longer governor of the Bank of England. Yes, the late lamented or unlamented is now is is now in charge of some kind of climate boondoggle, which is designed to discourage um, city firms from. Um, Investing in companies which 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 aren't sustainable. It's it's just it's, How it's extraordinary. The hell, who who has the sort of reach that can persuade uh, internationally uh, 
the money to move in the wrong direction, where they, where anyone who's even looked below the surface of the yeah. subject knows that it's a boondoggle. Yeah, well, you'd 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 think. I, I think at this stage there's only one person who can save us, uh, and that of course is me, uh, which is why I'm I, I'm making this 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 documentary with with the the mighty Martin. Well, Durkin. we're all behind you, James. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Of course you're behind me, but so I so I I, I get shot first. So so um uh yeah, we're going to make this documentary. And, and the, the sad thing I was going to tell you was was that a few when I wrote Watermelons, I thought um, that this would make a good documentary, and I talked with various people, including including David Geiler, the guy who the guy who produced or co-produced Alien. So he 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 was yeah, and he wanted to he liked he liked the whole idea and he wanted to turn it into a kind of, um, maybe a, a sort of a movie movie not not a documentary but a but a you know a sort of a Crichton type 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 movie Michael Crichton type movie, um, but he went he went to Hollywood with a with a script and and, and he realised that 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 it was so in bed with the Green Movement that there was no chance of getting that made, so. I then approached this this producer. I went. I won't mention his name. And he was really keen. He, he 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 was he was he was he was very much on board with my climate scepticism. Anyway, um, initially I approached him, not Durkin, to 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 engage in this in this project, and he wouldn't even he wouldn't even reply to my emails, and I found out that he's gone to the he's been. It's a bit like that final scene in in. Um, Body snatchers, um, you know, with with with. Um, so I'm going, I'm going, I'm going blank here. Um, Don Sutherland. All right. You, uh, you you don't know this moment. It's 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 it's, 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 it's a key. It's it's a sort of meme. It's a, it's it's a trope of 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 every every discussion by a right wing person like me. Everything tends towards the uh, the, the, body the, the body snatchers, um, where yeah, everyone has been has been subsumed into the into these alien creatures world you know there was no one is left that's what it comes down oh, to. oh right I yeah it's ringing bells mm. yeah 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 and 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 this is what this is what's happening the, the 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 whole of even look look at the telegraph the telegraph the paper of christopher booker um he's now the the, the, the paper actually that var me Broke broke the climate gate story. I mean, admittedly online rather than in in the the the, the print. When you know in the days of Telegraph blogs, even Telegraph, even the Mail, they've all been they've all been frightened off. They've all been frightened off by a combination of bullying uh, by people like Bob Ward, the the, the Grantham Institute funded. He was once described uh, on Twitter as as a, a climate scientist, and my comment that I put in was that is what I called lousy research yeah yeah he's not he's not a climate scientist and even if he were a climate scientist he'd still be talking bollocks um so so he he bullies newspaper editors he frightens none, them none of them none of these people i mean al gore isn't a climate scientist no no but but David anyway Attenborough but, isn't a climate scientist yeah but but i i always think that that's a dangerous game to play because that's the appeal to authority it's it, it, it it's as if, it, it's as if to say if if um, David Attenborough had a, a climate science degree, therefore we could take his bullshit seriously. Well, we don't. That's credentialism. It's it's just yeah, yeah, right. ult- ultimately what matters is the quality of the arguments. And if and if they can be backed up with 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 science and evidence, then fine. And if they're not, it doesn't really matter whether the person's a professor of of doctorology, genius, you know, for, with a with. But if it's, Two dozen if it's PhDs. not backed up, and and if all the projections collapse, as everyone has. Over twenty something years, the whole thing should have collapsed. Yeah, well, that's so why that's, that's why I keep saying it's it's got nothing to do with science. And and one of the one of the annoyances, um, there will be lots of people out there who are keen to appear on this documentary, explaining why their sciencey science is going to explain away the the climate change problem, um, and it's not because the whole global warming argument theory has been rigged in such a way as to be unfalsifiable so it's not really science it's politics you can you can never prove it wrong because they've they've arranged it that way uh so there will never be a, a there will never be a killer fact or or, or a um a pivotal moment 
where we suddenly realise that actually the science is all wrong. I mean, I, yeah, I've, I've got a few friends working on on interesting theories, but it's not going to it's not going to it's not going to slay it's the beast. It's also a global drug. I mean, it, it is uh, a, a global drug. Tr- trying to cu- uh, tr- cure a, a drug addiction can be extremely unpleasant for the patient. Uh, so, you know, well, it's, it's what it, it's what Matt Ridley calls chemotherapy to cure a cold. Uh, although I, I I would dispute the cold part. Where is where is the cold? You know, the, the, I think that people like Matt fight a very good fight, but people like Matt also they have to play this. They call themselves lukewarmers, lukewarmers yeah, I've seen and that. they and they have to call themselves lukewarmers to show that they they don't. They don't deny the, the anthropogenic influence on climate change. Well, I mean, I don't deny the, the anthropogenic influence on climate change insofar as, for example, the urban heat island effect, which is clearly a, an anthropogenic phenomenon, probably has a, a, an effect on at least local temperatures and may even have a kind of climatological effect. But that's, that's by the by. I, the, the, the bigger picture is that, that trillions of, of, of pounds and dollars of taxpayers' money are being squandered to no useful purpose whatsoever. In fact, uh, they're actually causing real damage, the, this this expenditure. Um, and uh, dealing, dealing with a problem that doesn't exist. I mean, it really, it really does not... There is not a... There is n- catastrophic man-made climate change does not exist. It's just... And even if it did, there's not a damn thing we could do about well, it. That's the, the, well, that's you see, the, there were so many levels... Uh, of of defense that we have in our argument and of course the other side being devious uses this as as their well which is it are you saying that temperatures haven't risen dramatically since since the little I, well actually they, they wouldn't mention the little ice age they, they'd say uh in the 20th century has has it have temperatures not risen to alarming degrees uh, or or are you saying that that the methods we're using to deal with this problem are are inadequate or what well actually i'm saying all those things because it's not it's not that simple it's a device to control the populace. It totally is. One of the things that annoys me, Brian, one of the many things that annoys me... I, 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 Brian, no, it's one of the things that annoys you. No, 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 no you, you don't annoy me. Um, the... the uh, is that... I went through this naive phase when I... Well, I suppose we all do, when I was growing up, where I sort of thought that the world we lived in now was more intelligent and sophisticated to any world that existed before that 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 we'd somehow almost a sort of francis fukuyama type thing where where i believed in this thing called progress where where the human beings we'd, we'd sort of eliminated most of the bad things in the world and that and that the people in power were basically good and and, and just None of this is true. We are we are Aztecs capturing prisoners and beating their 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 heads in at the top of ziggurats or or, or whatever pyramids, and we're cutting out their still beating hearts and drinking drinking the blood. In order to, to appease stores. some god. Yeah, we we we're, we're really not much better. We okay. So, um, but now you see a couple of podcasts ago. Yeah, Douglas Murray was saying that he was optimistic. Well, he and Douglas I thought to myself, silly. I know what he means. You see, I believe in people. It's the the people. The people uh, voted the yeah. right way in the referendum. The people put Boris in. Whether it was a good idea, we can come to that in a moment. But the people have a lot more sense. That it's I no, I do, I do. I'm with you. I do believe that there is in the wisdom of crowds. I do believe that actually, still, even now probably the majority of people in this country think that and we're talking about Britain but it's certainly the case in the US and and Australia I imagine and who wherever else there's, there's the special friends uh, avatars um they they can see through all this bullshit i i mean look i was talking to talking to to Lawrence Fox today and he was talking about all the people all the the people who who stop him in the street and congratulate him on saying, yeah, mate, I'm totally with you. You know, thank you for exactly. saying what I believe. And this is why, by the way, this is the real reason I, 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 I do this podcast. I mean, obviously, 
it would be nice if I could monetize it properly one day. I mean, if it, it would be great. If imagine if I could earn a living out of it, um, and it's great that I've been been you know, people have been buying special friend badges and 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 that's good. But if I sat down, well, I, I've mentioned this before. If I sat down with my accountant and I, and I tried to justify the podcast, he wouldn't he wouldn't be very impressed. Um, but I do it because. I know there was a hunger out there. There were lots of people who just who listened to it and go, finally, somebody who understands what I'm thinking and who thinks like us and makes me feel normal rather than a freak. Actually, my God, if I could reach out to all those people, the the, the podcast would have about thirty million, thirty million viewers. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be coining it in. Um, it's but well, I have to say, I'm going to. Oh, do. Little smoke up your ass. Oh, yeah. um, oh do I love that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it coloured? Is it coloured? Is it scented smoke? <laughs> <laughs> it won't be us anyway. Um, <laughs> the, the oh, brother, I'll oh, tell you what smoke. you do right with your podcast oh, yeah. is that you you have this natural little boy inquisitiveness. You mm. just want to find out, and you ask very good questions of your guests. And I've, the, I barely a podcast goes by without my going ah. Oh, from something someone said and it's quite often it's questions that other people wouldn't dream of saying it saying because you as i said you 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 have no filter you're always saying that you have no filter right and you you uh you have a style of asking questions that brings stuff out of people that's that's good well, that's good that's probably why i ended up in the shit profession of the shit trade rather of of journalism because of this curiosity i'm always asking questions it just always <coughs> I'm actually really, really interested in people. Whenever I meet somebody, I mean, unless they're boring as fuck, I suppose, but, but, but most people are. Most people are interesting, and I just want to, I want to find out the most interesting things about that person at any given, given moment and, and, and who they are and what's, what's, what's bothering them. And uh, I, think I, I think I get it. Actually, both my parents are like that. Mother, mother is always striking up conversations with strangers, um, and, and, and Pa is, is, is a sort of, very intellectually curious. I think partly born of the fact that he didn't go to university. Well, I mean, he he, he did he he studied Chinese in the RAF at, at um, one of the London universities, so he could listen to the Chinese fighter pilots communicating with one another in around wow. the, the Korean War. Yeah, he was he was based on 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 a, on, a, on Victoria Peak in 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 Hong Kong and and did that. Anyway, but but yeah, so I've got I was quite lucky with my parents, and they've they've given me this this curiosity. Um, about people and that's so it's a it's a skill I've got completely naturally and you know I, I'm 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 of the view increasingly as I get old you know I, I, I look at my my life and my career which I consider a, a bit of a bit of a failure you know I look at my little brother Charlie for example and I look at he's built a, a business worth 100 million or something you know and, and that's just the start and I think, wow! If only I could have done that. If only. And he works. He works all hours. You know, his whole life is dedicated towards building businesses. Um, but at the same time, I think you've really got to work with the material you've been given. And I wonder, actually, maybe this is a wrong thing to say, but I wonder whether all these people who can say, who, who, who all these sort of self-help courses, where they, they, they tell you. You can be who you want to be, and you can make yourself a better person. I don't think I can make myself a better person. Plenty of strength, and your strength is asking good yeah, questions. Yeah, all I can do is 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 really just ask around, being me. I'm not going to be like look at look at Toby Young. I I love Toby. I mean, obviously he's a cuck, but Toby has played a blinder with his his free speech union. I think that was a really clever move. And and and, and Toby's the kind of he's always looking out for for new. stuff stuff to do you know his free schools and stuff but the reason i haven't done that is because i don't have the inclination to do that kind of shit i, I just just in the, in the same way that toby could never really do he, he wouldn't be as good at good at me as this and i think you have to just accept your limitations that somebody somebody listened to the listening to the podcast said that my they, they knew what my myers-briggs thing was um I mean, I've I've never taken a Mars Briggs test, but nor I. But, I, but, but, I only vaguely know what but, it's about. But uh, but I'll tell you, when I listen to your podcast, mm. there are several moments when I think, oh yes, only James would have asked that question. 
Oh, well, good. Well, and those, the, that's when the thing comes alive. Well, I've just done one with, uh, this, this, this podcast will go out afterwards. I've done one with, um, with David Starkey. Um, Have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but obviously, your excitement won't be. Uh, it, it will be misplaced by the time this goes out because you'll have already heard it. So you, so you, so you've got to pretend now. Oh yeah, I've heard that one. Oh, yes, I heard that. Oh, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was very good. Yes, um, I love the question that you are. Yes, right. Yeah. So, but I, I. Actually, I don't know. I don't know how that one went. I, I, I'm not even sure I want to talk about it. Um, uh, okay, well, don't because yeah. because it it needs to be uh, held in abeyance for for the listener. Yeah. Okay. Supposing that the prime minister was sitting here, what would you ask him? Oh God, um, Boris, how can you have fucked up so majorly? Uh, how can you? Wh- why did you blow it? That's the question, isn't it? Why? Why? What's happened? Because. Uh, Did he sign some sort of Faustian pact? What, why? What the hell is he up to? Did you ever? Did you ever really understand Brexit, except as a means towards advancing your political career? That, that would is be really looking like he and and he wouldn't. Do you know what the thing about Boris is? Boris is so bluff and opaque. You would never get an answer out of him. And I wonder whether he even knows his own mind, actually. I wonder whether... Um, I mean, Boris has got lots of lots of admirable qualities. He, he thinks very quickly, even as he's talking very slowly. And what he does is he uses his slow talking and his ums and ahs as a way of his his brain is probably working at twice or three times the speed of yours and yet you imagine you're lulled into a sense of of, of full sense of security you imagine that because he's talking so slowly um that he's probably a bit slow and he's not he's he's processing he's got very very quick processing speed which i suppose is a mark of of, of super intelligence well but, since he's not here what is the answer to that question well, well I, I come to that but it, He's got many qualities and he's very jolly and stuff, but I think he thinks like a Wickhamist. Um, and I don't mean that as a compliment. He doesn't think like a, like a Newtonian. He thinks he thinks like... He believes in nothing. He's, he, he can see both sides of the argument. And when people said, you know, well, Boris was never a real Brexiteer, he, um, he famously wrote arguments for and arguments against. And... They were about the same length, and uh, I, I can't remember what the circumstances were, but it was as though most of us, I think, you and I, for example, and I think probably most of our listeners, felt in our bones, in our guts, in our hearts, everything, that Brexit was the only thing. I mean, that the, 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 the logic was implacable, that that Brexit was the only right and proper thing. You know, duh. Duh, but, absolutely. But, but Boris, you look at the Johnson family... I mean, they're a yeah, bunch of. The place, they're they? a bunch of. They're, they're not. They're certainly not really conservatives. They're not really. Um, they're not even classical liberals. I mean, Stanley is a, a greeny Europhile. Rebecca, um, Rachel's, Rachel's, you know, at least as bad, if not worse. Um, and the apple hasn't fallen that far from the tree. And I. And I and, I feel slightly frustrated and annoyed about this because I, I, I wasted quite a lot of personal capital defending, not just defending Boris, but bigging him up in that time, in that, during that awful period where he probably was our only hope, I think, of getting us out of the Brexit mess. Yeah. I think people, it looked like it. people who criticise a lot of Breitbart readers, well, no, it's probably about five or six trolls who lurk, who lurk in the comments below and they're, they're quite unpleasant and, and they, they they keep banging on about what well, you said that Boris is going to be great well I think a lot of us rather hoped that Boris was going to be great because Absolutely. in those times sure he, was, him to be. he was our only hope the, people forget what an ampass we were stuck in with with the awful Burko treating the House of Commons like his personal fiefdom. I mean, he really was the most look powerful... Back, you look back at the, the, the back end of last year and it was just it's like a nightmare in retrospect. It was a nightmare at the time. It was. It was extraordinary. The, the way that the Supreme Court, this creation of Tony Blair, only existed for 10 years, Baroness Hale, was effectively rewriting Britain's, Britain's constitution um, 
insofar as we have a we don't really have a written constitution. But I she, bet David Starkey will have some things to well, say you about see, that. Well, you see, you see that the problem with my don't, don't let's preempt that. No, but talk, no, but, but actually, I, I tell you one thing about the David Starkey thing. I wish I'd interviewed him in that period where he would have been more angry um, about oh, about, right. the, about the kind of constitutional rape that was taking place. Because he'd have had very firm things to say, he was more measured when I interviewed him. I was now, but you've you've just touched something uh, that is very interesting. Have you noticed how the whole subject has gone totally off the boil? How the whole Brexit matter is now yesterday's news, and no one could give a damn yes. because it's happened. But except it hasn't, and that's what bothers me. It hasn't happened uh, yet. You, yeah, you see, I'm I'm. Okay, this could be the same complacency which led me to think that Boris was going to be the answer to all our prayers. Um, it seems to me that Brexit was never the was never the complicated thing that the the deep state the, and the EU made it out. Well, to be. David Frost is saying all the right things. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say we've given the job to one man, David Frost. A Led Zeppelin fan, by all accounts. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I mean, what, you know, what? I can't think of a higher recommendation. Um, this guy... They were a, a to- beach combo, weren't they, in your day? They were a beach combo. T- t- totally, he <laughs> totally... Actually, not before my, before my day, but... Uh, so, um, he, he totally gets Brexit. He totally gets the point of it. And that's fine. I, I'm fairly confident that we are going to, we might end up with a no deal. We're going to uh, teach those Euro weenies. We're going to put them in their place and that's going to be fine. But for me, Brexit was never really about Brexit. Brexit was about much bigger. The, the reason the reason that, that, that people were so emotionally drawn to Brexit and why households were divided, why f- people lost friends. You, you've probably lost friends. I've certainly lost friends as a lot of, Brexit. Well, I, I just refuse to talk about it after a bit. Well, because it wasn't about Britain. It wasn't really about Britain's relationship with the European Union. It was about what that relationship symbolised. It was about things like everything from sovereignty to an Englishman's right to to banter freely uh, and not be not be chased after by the, um, the 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 tone police Gestapo. Um, it was about just a, about risk taking, a sense of identity, uh, a bloody mindedness, all Which these is all good British characteristics. Good British characteristics. The things that where we talked about this was talking the things that make us make us British, that make make us special. Well, everyone's and, entitled to self determination, and that's what we were hoping to get back. And we just about have got back. So, so that so that was that's fine. But look at what Boris is. You mentioned earlier um, that it's almost as though we've been given a pact with the devil. You will, you may have your Brexit pretty much as you want it, but the devil will take you up the arse in any number of horrible, hideous, and painful ways. And they're coming thick and fast. And they're fast. coming thick and fast. We are going to sell out your communication telecommunication system to the chinese who will use it to spy on you and and to rupture the relationship that you have with it, rupture the special relationship with america and australia the five eyes you're going to and, and uh, there can be no justification for this how can it be right that the chinese that, that a hostile foreign power is allowed effectively to bribe its way into our telecommunication system by offering us cheap technology why are they giving it as cheap because they want access to our communication system so you've got the Huawei you've got the real deal breaker for me which was HS2 where you've got Boris completely surrendering to the blob to the deep state to the vested interests of the construction industry the Chinese are trying to muscle in on that as yeah, well, well. well the, the, indeed but and I, I heard that Boris hadn't made up his mind on HS2 until the day before he made the announcement. And the day before he made the announcement, he was um, visited by a deputation, the, the the lobbying group from the various engineering companies responsible for, for putting out HS2. And they said, look, um, if you don't give the go ahead to HS2, a lot of these companies are going to go 
bust or have a, re- a really hard time. And what he should have said was, it's not the job of governments to pick winners. It's not the good job of government to take money from the pockets of taxpayers and spend it on projects which are not worth the money. That is irresponsible government. Instead, Boris surrenders to these 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 lobby groups, these special interest groups. That seems to me to be outrageous. Outrageous. Not so you'd expect it of a Labour government, but not of a Conservative government worth the name. So you've got Huawei, you've got HS2, and then, of course, the thing that we haven't... It's so incomprehensibly awful and wrong that well, I, I find it almost painful to talk about this this net zero by 2050. We're back where we started. The, 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 whole, the whole climate thing, the yeah. derivatives from that, the net zero thing, which is hideously expensive, probably unaffordable, probably impossible to achieve. Well, it's going to, it's going to go, just according to some costings by the Global Warming Policy Foundation, it's going to cost three trillion well i remember when when a billion was a lot of money but a trillion uh, and it's got the gonna hit the poorest hardest it it will hit the poorest hardest the very people who lent boris their vote lent the conservatives their vote and boris and whom boris has promised to to honor by by taking care of their interests and he's not doing so he's he's just the creature of he's obviously the creature of i mean his bird obviously has an influence on this, you know. Maybe yeah, I've, I've he gets heard extra that. I, shags I can't and, believe he's as shallow as, as that. You, you're a, hello, Brian. You're a man. You know what? You know how shallow we are. We what we'll do for, <laughs> yes, but for he, he gets through the women. He can get through this one if it uh, if it if he chose to. Yeah. Okay. Um, he's also that smoothie chops, Zach Goldsmith. Zach Goldsmith is very influential. I, I've I've met Zach a couple of times, and he's very very charming. He's got a sort of, he's he's a sort of got a James Bond villain charm to him, but he's he's charming nevertheless. Uh, and and you can see he's very plausible. You very think some, somebody that elegant and rich and plausible uh, and Etonian, <laughs> just good at kind of good at getting. They're, they're good at that shit. They're good at getting their way. Uh, Gove has got the green bug. Gove completely. Surrendered all his intellectual faculties, where where the, the whole climate change thing is concerned. Who's pulling their strings? That's what I want to know. Well, it's not like there's some kind of sinister organisation. It's a, it's not a conspiracy. It's a concatenation of interests that that involving even you look look at the statements made by the CEOs of Shell and BP. They've all surrendered the pass. They've all They've all um, needlessly, I would say, accepted the terms of the enemy, which are that fossil fuels are stranded assets, that they should or in danger of becoming stranded assets, that they should be left in the ground, that that you occasionally get a few the odd brave voice like the the the, the bursar of whatever Cambridge Oxford College who said to the students, Well, I'm sorry, but I can't I can't divest um, all our fossil fuel holdings. It's not within my um, immediate power, but I can I can turn off the heating if you like in the college, uh, uh, which is a, which is a fantastic response. Why aren't people more robust? Why indeed? Um, it's we we have a massive institutional failing. You know, so you you quoted you quoted Douglas earlier, um, being optimistic about people and and. Funnily enough, David Starkey said something similar to me about that he was optimistic. I'm optimistic about people. The, the, definitely one of the best things about doing this this podcast and my, my sort of latter-day career, ever since I've been cast further and further adrift from the mainstream media, like like losing my spectator column. Um, you know, just it's it's I can see that I'm being pushed pushed away from from the mainstream media, because this is what happens. It's a sort of form of a form of cancel culture. I mean, you've seen it. Look at Lawrence it Fox. See, indeed. See, um, but one of the great consolations is realizing that I am actually in tune with where real ordinary people are, and I've made some great friends. I've made I've, people like you. People have given me all manner of support and encouragement, 
and that's that's really good it's like i i i hate i hate using the star wars analogy because i i think star wars is basically shit but um, I do feel like I, you know, I'm part of the Rebel Alliance against against the Death Star, and you know we have got X wings and, and Y wing fighters, and that's quite nice against the the Tie fighters of the of the Evil Empire. Is the Force with us? Yeah. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, of course the Force is with us. Yeah, it it, it absolutely is. Um, and I wonder whether look, go back to go back to um, Salamis. The Persians versus the the Greek the Greek city states um, when democracy barely existed. Um, yeah, somehow the force was 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 with the with the Greeks, wasn't it, rather than with the, was, the Persian tyranny. Well, the thing is that political theory appears to persuade all these people. Yeah that if you keep people poor, you can control them better. Doesn't it look like that to you? Yeah, I suppose people... But do you... Do you are you saying that the establishment, the elite, deliberately do this stuff in order to grind down the, the rest of us and make us malleable and, and, and biddable? Do you, do you think they consciously set out to do this or do you think it's rather that they don't really think about it they just do it I'd love to think it was the latter some of them aren't terribly bright I have to say when well, you hear the, them speaking that's the thing I, I, but then you think well they can't be that stupid so I mean some of the things that they're talking I mean the zero uh, thing by 2050 mm. it's just lunacy it just can't be done and, and it, the attempt is going to bankrupt the country yeah uh, and as I said, the poorest will pay. They will, yes. Uh, but this the, this same creed has, has, has been keeping Africa poor for years as well. I mean, I don't know. Is there something that bothers me? There's something, I, there's strings being pulled from somewhere. It's not Soros. Soros has got a lot of money, but he hasn't got that sort of reach, I don't think. I would love, for example, to go and find out what it was that happened to George Osborne on... Oleg Deripaska's yacht that time with um, who was the other financier guy I forget um, I remember the story uh, and I can't um, remember the names either Nat Rothschild um, just right. uh, I don't know whether it was Compromat or whether it was that that finally the, the rules were laid out to Osborne in a way he he und that he finally understand that this is how the world works and these are the people you've got to completely shaft and this is what you have to do. But it's it's as if when people when people join the establishment, they go over to the dark side. They, the Dan Hannon, one of his Hannon's law was ever, no prime minister ever continues his Euroscepticism Euroscept, having got into office. That was yes. Hannah's Law from years ago. And it was extraordinary. Something happens when you get... Now, yeah. it sounds as if we're sitting here indulging in the mother of all conspiracy theories. But I'm just trying to make sense of what just doesn't well, seem that's to make sense. Well, you see, this is why I so like Trump. And I'm, I'm mystified why more people don't, over this side of the pond, don't don't get him. Well, I mean, that's what they needed. They needed a son of a bitch. He's a... He's extremely unpleasant man, I gather, etc., 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 and he's boorish and all the rest of it, but that's what was required. They needed someone who could go well, in there it. and be prepared to exercise muscle and do what needs to be done. And he's turned the country around. He's made the world safer. He's made the country safer. The, the, he's made the, the country's economy safer. And having jumped out of the Paris Accord, is about the only country in the entire planet whose carbon emissions have been going down. Yeah. Yeah, because of shale, which Boris won't let us have. That you see, that's the, there. You, see, there, you you've that, mentioned think... another really culpable thing about this government, and it's not like it's not as though Boris hasn't written articles in the past about things like the shale gas miracle. He's actually he's actually recognised that the Boland shale, for example, I think is deeper than any of the shales in so in, in, in America. It's the kind of 
it's the blob. It's the it's the green blob, which extends from the city to look. Look at how he's caved to all these pressure groups like Extinction Rebellion. Look at how Cambridge, Cambridge I mean, Police... Absolutely. just down the road from me, Cambridge is an absolute mess at the moment. How can, how can Cambridge Police allow this protest group to dig up the lawns in front of, of, of Trinity College, the, the, the grandest college in Cambridge? Well, partly it's because that idiot woman is now the master of, of Trinity, um, Sally Davis, you know, just absolutely useless. Um... That that um, this it, it's ultimately about the suborn subornment of our institutions, isn't it? Yeah. That and the, the police as well. So the police. I mean, I'm looking forward to to talking to um, Peter Hitchens about this stuff. Uh, I'm sure he'll be very black pill about the whole. I'm sure he will. Di- I'm sure he will. Di- but but you know. But, Contra Douglas, Douglas's optimism, and Contra Stark's optimism. At the same time, you look around and you think, we are living in end times that where where the police are more interested in painting their BMWs in the rainbow flag and and dressing up and dancing at at, at gay parades than they They're are investigating, stopping, burglaries. investigating burglaries, let alone stabbings. Uh, or controlling the tra- traffic in in Cambridge, in Cambridge or stopping people yeah. from. I mean, because they've they've been infiltrated by people who've, with probably social sciences, probably sociology degrees, which which say that that all crime is society's fault and criminals aren't really to blame. And sociology, the study of people who don't need studying, exercised by people who do. I, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So so, the police, and you you could you could you could. Go go across the board here. I mean, I mean, doctors, for example. The, of my many objections to the National Health Service, I think one of my greatest is this: that it effectively concer- it, it turns people who ought to be doctors and nurses into communists. That they they conflate medical care with socialistic um, uh, healthcare systems. And it's, they're not the same thing. You can believe in healthcare as a good thing and, and the work and doctors and nurses do as a good thing without having to subscribe to socialistic ideolo- ideology. And yet, so many doctors and nurses think that if you don't believe uh, th- 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 that socialism is the only way, it, it politicizes them, it radicalizes them. And you only have to look on Twitter to realize this, the, the, the things that they say. that And to criticize... They make it impossible to criticise uh, the the socialistic ideology because they pretend you're criti- criticising healthcare, and they're completely different things. Quite so. Um, so, so we could go on. We could go on making a list of all the institutions. I mean, one of my hobby horses, Oxford and Cambridge colleges, for example. But I mean, that applies cro- pretty much across the board to all universities. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, more and more occupations require degrees, and one wonders why. I mean. It, yeah, when, is it is it in order that they? I mean, it's all part of the Alinsky plot to yeah. get them indoctrinated in the uh, in the lecture halls. Or the so lectures? how do we how do we get how do we get it back? I mean, I, you know, I can make a few more podcasts if that helps. You know, I can make my I can make my climate change documentary. But I, I tell you, I I, I keep I, I keep trying to, to persuade the wife that that actually we we. There is no future in this country. I, 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 I mean, okay, so it might get in the way of my putative fox hunting comeback, um, which I keep planning to sneak past the radar once, you do enough, that in Texas. once enough time has elapsed. And you, you can't because there's no grass in Texas. All right. Okay. You, need, you need grass to hunt on. And the, there are only a few states in America where they have real grass. Most of them have have not not real grass, so you can do it in Argentina, in Virginia. Um, they have hunts, but you see again, American fox hunting. I think they don't. A lot of them don't drink alcohol, for example. It's it's all sort well, of never manicured and and. and You've got to have your syrup cup. Yeah. So, but it, but, um, I just think. I don't want to live in a country where the government is quite this oppressive, and and it's weird. You know, I've I've never felt that before about a government did, uh, of any hue, but now I look at this one being run by 
people who were supposed to be my friends, my ideological allies, Boris, you know, university contemporary, Gove, university mate, and they're shitting all over my country. And I and I just think, well, and 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 all the all the the, the people who ought to be supporting me. Uh, all the institutions are not supporting me because they've all they've all been turned a la invasion of the body snatchers. So I'm quite bleak. But I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I must say, you put it that way, it is it is very depressing. But I'm I s- in a depression at the moment as well, so that doesn't help. But particularly with the loss of my car and and my and 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 yeah, that's very sad. You went over some rubble and it took out the sump. I went over some rubble and it took out the sump. Yeah, I mean, it, it was my favourite ever car. It was like. I mean, okay, so cars are inanimate objects, it was, but it, it did feel like losing a favourite pet or a hunter uh, somehow. Because Particularly after James Ruppert's been talking to you. Well, exactly, yeah, exactly. Good old James. Um, James is advising me on what, what is it? Oh, new good. car to get. Oh, you're in good hands there. Yes, uh, the, the main problem is, is is lack of money. I Lots of people have been sort of coming up with helpful suggestions on Twitter as to the car I can get next. They seem to be not factoring in the fact that I have no... No bloody money. I don't know where. I mean, it's just like I, journalism is not is not a great mm. great. Well, particularly not not modern journalism is not a great. I mean, this is not it's not a, not a sob story. But I I just wonder. I that that's that that's the bit where I I, I do wish I'd I'd I, I'd, I'd fought against my my personality type and and gone for it. And gone and been a, a merchant banker. Yeah, or a commodity some. broker. Yeah, I, well, yeah. I, you see, that would have appealed to my risk-taking. Whether I've been any good at it, <laughs> I don't know. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, so w- we can have we solved the world? Well, we, I don't uh, think we have, but uh, we might have identified a few problems with it. Well, uh, and uh, we, we, we're we're actually we're up. To, we're fifty-five at the moment, so we can talk. We can talk a bit more. Is, is, is there anything else you? You're quite good at. At making me at provoking me, or, oh, right. or well, no, I don't like provoke. Are you 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 good at sort of making me digress interestingly. Well, I mean your your digressions are so interesting. Um. Well, uh, yeah, are they? I mean, I I um somebody that's right. I I I got so carried away with my digression, I forgot to mention the point of it, which was the guy who told me that the the Myers Briggs, what well, well, what letters or thingies I am on the Myers Briggs said that one of the ways he knew that I was that particular Myers-Briggs is that I always think aloud, that I'm coming, you know, you can hear, you can hear me cogitating. Um, and I suppose that is what I do. I just think it's really important to show your workings and... and well, now, I've, I've, you asked me if I could provoke you. I'm having a wonderful time snuggling here with, with Daisy on my with the, With the dog, yeah. Um, yeah, she's liking it too, yeah. actually. Next time you've got Dick here, you're playing the yes no game, which is brilliant. Yeah, um, it, it's what we all do all the time. But just you might sort of make it a routine. When you get a really juicy no, the next question should be knave or fool. It's always the issue when someone is a no. Why? What are they just stupid, or are they villainous? Oh right. Okay. If I said to you. Uh, Theresa May, fool or knave? Oh, yeah, I can see. Uh, you you know what the problem with this game is? There's going to be, and you as an ex radio producer will know this. It, it there's too much silence because <laughs> I'm matter. not sure. Maybe you've picked a, a particularly hard one. Okay, Theresa May, knave or fool? I think yeah, you know, she's a fool. David Attenborough, she's a fool. Uh, f- fool. I'd love to think so. I, oh, I, do I you? want to think okay. so. Okay. I do want to think so. Uh, because Tell, if otherwise, he's a me, very nasty piece of work. Well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Do you, I think he's one just of, mis- misguided. He's listening to the wrong people. One of my many problems, Brian, and I do have lots of them. I mean, just like a fuck ton of problems I have. Um, one of them is that I'm really quite keen to give people the benefit of the doubt i'm quite i'm quite an people think i'm I'm going to be very spiky because of my because my prose is quite spiky 
and I'm quite opinionated. Yes, it is. That's one of the, 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 when I was with you before, I yeah. interviewed you because I wanted your listener to know more about the real James Dillingpool. And actually, you've been telling us in your interviews ever since. But it, uh, you, I wanted you to expose that sort of vulnerable side of yourself, which the spike in this tends to camouflage. Yes, well, I don't understand that. I don't understand why um, there is this kind of disjunct between my some of my prose and what I'm actually like. Is it perhaps just that my kind of righteous rage, if you like? Is it is it that I, 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 I see quite clearly people behaving badly or, or uh, yeah, people behaving badly and I want to... And you roll up your sleeves and wade in. And yeah. You do it, and you're so funny with it that also that that's actually kind of humiliating to your victim and that's i think that's why you sometimes get some fairly oh. hefty stuff back on twitter not as bad as as uh, toby young no so yes i i hadn't really thought about people being really hurt by my um maybe that's naive of me as well but but i always think that the kind of people i get at are impervious to criticism so really, all my all so knaves, yeah. So uh, yeah, maybe that's the case. So so that so that it really doesn't matter how rude I am about them because I'm only really doing it for the fan base to 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 for them to go to feel better about the awfulness that this person is doing. Yeah. Um. I mean, okay, Lord Devon. <laughs> I'd say he's a knave. So would I. He definitely, I think he's one of the worst people. So, um, uh, Carney, he's a neighbor of mine. Carney, knave, I would say. Um, he, knave, which is only a kind of ex Goldman Sachs, right? Banker can be. I think there's a, there's a sort of. Um, you do sell your soul when you join, join the city institutions. I think that's that's part of the deal. I think that I think I think one of the ugly secrets about the the financial sector is that what they do is essentially not about creating value um it is about on some level raping somebody somewhere um exploiting them it's not a, it's 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 not about it's not like doing what entrepreneurs do which is finding something the market needs and then providing it more cheaply and efficiently than anybody which else. Which enriches the whole which enriches society. The world. There may be some I, collateral damage, I, but... I think the great secret, the, the dirty, whacking great, ugly secret of, of, of people in the financial sector, and I think somebody once about say this to me, somebody who'd a- actually made his money in the city or, or had, had been in the city, and this person said to me, look, these people really are no better talent-wise than somebody who is repairing your i don't know your your phone or something or 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 well, probably less talented actually that, that or, or 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 selling you know selling you pet insurance maybe and yet they are in they are in a, a, a sector which because of an anomaly of, of 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 history or 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 economics or whatever um find themselves being paid eye watering sums money. of money yeah. For, for doing actually not very much. And I think that what if you enter that world, and maybe maybe my city avatars would dispute this, but I, but I wonder... Whether, so that in itself is a first impact. Yeah, well, well that's what I mean, that, 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 yeah, that you can never... Yeah, it, it, that's right, right. The first rule of Fight Club is not to talk about Fight Club. The first rule of City Club is not to is not to uh, tell anyone what a racket is. Not even to admit it to yourself, actually. Right. Um, do you not think? I think you're probably right. Yes, I think you're probably right. Uh, there's just some more fools and knaves. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, my mind's gone blank. Um, all right. So okay, I say Bob Ward. I think he's just ineffably low grade. I just really, really, really low grade. In fact, do you know? Again, I, this is why I think this Naven Full game is, isn't isn't really going to work work with me because actually I think that in most cases it's really third rate people with fourth rate minds. 
But there are, there are people out there who are good and kind and well-meaning, but thoroughly misguided. Yes, but also... Oh, there's a cat outside. Um, the, the, I think that people who are not very clever or, or talented compensate very successfully with uh, pushiness, um, a, a sort of a, a dogged ability to worm their way through the system and end up promoted well above their, their, their pay grade. Um, what's it called? The, the Peter Principle, isn't it? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think this happens an awful lot. And you look at politics particularly. I mean, look at the cabinet. Look at George Eustace. George Useless. What, why? What, how can somebody that uh, that talentless ever be given a job, in, a senior job in... in, in, in Answers government? on the postcard, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think this is, this is going to be the sort of depressing... Because the thing is, you have caught me in a kind of low pessimistic mood. All right, let's, let's cheer up a bit. Mm. Um, so, we have a magic wand. If uh, I know what, what was the do. Brexit Party is now becoming the Reform Party, mm. ought it to gird up its loins and we have, no, we have no opposition at the moment. I mean, the Liberal Party at the moment is such a mess that, that that's something the, reform the party. really needs is an opposition, a proper opposition. The Reform Party, if that's what it's going to be called, has to have, has to become the anti-Green Party. Yep. Because there is no party doing that at the moment. And I was very disappointed with the way the Brexit Party, I talked to, I had an argument with Richard Tice about this. And he was not, he did not emerge from it very well. Because I'm not sure how, I don't, I'm not sure how much it's he... It's one of the principles of politics. If everyone, if all the parties are agreeing on something, you should treat it with the utmost suspicion. Yeah, exactly. And also because you can't vote it out. So they were sort of, they were hedging their bets because I think they were thinking, well, we've got the Brexit to win and we don't want to frighten the horses. But actually, if you um, drew a, uh, oh, am I going to mention the Venn diagram? No, put it this way. Most people who voted Brexit are also climate sceptical. That, I think you're probably for, right. For the, uh, and it, and it's, it's fairly obvious why. Because the things that make you sceptical about the, the corrupt, sclerotic institution that, it, that is the European Union are also things that make you um, sceptical. Well, you're fighting back against people who don't argue, just call you names. Yes. Well, that's certainly true. In both cases. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I think that the Reform Party needs to be more robust in address it needs to represent all of us who think we're being sold a pop and you know three trillion is a lot of money three trillion is a lot of money uh, I mean, and, and I, I think three trillion here three trillion there before too long you're talking about serious money I, 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 think, it's, I think it's probably an underestimate as well because, it, because, it, because it's essentially um, <coughs> they've just added up the costs of, of of using renewable energy as opposed to, to gas, which is what we should be using, and and also to towards uh, to insulating homes, but it's going to be much more than that. It's going to be much more all pervasive. I mean, what about what about cars? You know, this 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 move to electric vehicles. Oh. What? Oh, it's it's going to be, and people <laughs> people say, oh well, of course. This is this is what really annoys me on Twitter at the moment. People say. Oh well, of course, uh, it's all going to come unstuck. It, it's it, we, they're, they're going to find that it's that it's they won't be able to afford to go ahead with it. I said, yeah, that's not the point. It's how far they'll get down the road before they discover and how much this. everything's going to cost us in the yeah. meantime. Yeah, yeah. So I want to flee the country. I I, I don't know where I'm going to go, but at least if it's some other government messing up the country. Um, at least it won't be my government. It'll be my borrowed government. And I, I, I think that's somehow less offensive. I have a friend, uh, well, an acquaintance, uh, who is a, a serious Europhile and was a Remainer, all the rest of it, and, and still is, and uh, etc. Ages ago, long before the referendum, I remember saying to him that, that, that the EU was corrupt and uh, incompetent, etc. Et he said, do you think Westminster is any better? I said, actually, no, I don't. But at least... Once we got out of Europe, we could do something about it. Now the question is, will we? Well, we won't, I don't think. There's, there's, when, when I appeared in 
Durkin's to bring the wheel full circle when I appeared in Martin Durkin's Brexit the movie and what I liked about that film was the optimistic vision it sold of a, of a, of a, a dynamic Britain outside the European um, Union and I thought that was I thought the message was going to be fulfilled by the the outcome of of of, of Brexit, and Boris's speech at Greenwich was extremely promising, except for one or two nasty little. I've just done a a, a blog posting on that. Oh, do you think is he is he a good speech? How do you? It's a good his... speech. That was what worried me at the beginning was this is what needs to happen. We need to uh, unleash all this and all these right things, and I said what we need is the politicians to provide a proper lead. And I came in and said no. Because he'd been he'd been quoting Bastiat, he'd been quoting Mill, he'd been quoting really? what Con- Mises, uh, Hayek, all, all of them, all of them, <laughs> yeah, uh, Ricardo, the rest of them, uh, and I said they don't say you should supply a lead; they say you should get the hell out of the way. Yeah, Ibn Khaldun. Did you mention Ibn Khaldun? I didn't. Nor did he. No, but no. Uh, and and so th- and also there was a section in there we started talking about. Zero carbon, all that sort of thing, and I uh, there's a paragraph that I got really quite hefty. I'm afraid. Well, well, yeah, but so just go on, just just tell me, so I don't have to look, have to go and do some read research. The bloody thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Read the bloody thing. What, what, what is he good, Boris? He's a good speaker. Yes, he is a good speaker. Uh, uh, and why? What, you're talking, what you mentioned earlier is interesting. Um, he waffles and and uh, appears on occasions to be losing the thread. And then he comes out, slap on the second. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, oh, he's a very good speaker. A very good speaker. And uh, uh, mm, yes. Have you heard Gove speak? Michael Gove. Yes, I have. Uh, actually, um, I want to go back and, and uh, retrospectively look at that one that he did where he had a go at um, Corbyn in, in Parliament, the last previous Parliament. Oh, God, the overrated one. Yeah, I, 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 Was it? Well, I just, I've... I think Gove is a brilliant speaker and he's at his best when speaking off the cuff and he can he everyone can always give, is he can give an impromptu um, oration which is just like takes the breath away he's really really funny he's really funny really clever sort of naughty all the which is why it's so disappointing the way he's gone politically seeing mm. seeing such talent frankly wasted um, you know, I, one of my things is I tear the paper out of people's hands. So you don't need that. You don't need notes. Well, that, that, that actually, anyone listening to this, if they want to get anything other than kind of an hour, hour and a bit's rambling from Brian. I mean, not, I, not, I'm not accusing you of the hour and a bit's rambling. I mean, that's from me. But but the bit they're going to take from you is is that, and it's really important, isn't it? Don't use, don't read out your speech. Absolutely, never, never, never. I mean, the most important. Uh, that's where I came in earlier on. You're the least least important person in the room. The most important people are the audience. So think about them and address them. And that's and if you start thinking about yourself, and if you've got a piece of paper, you've got a screen between you and them. Actually, I I was going to end it, and then I suddenly remembered, uh, um, I wish you'd been at the last debate I was in at Durham. Um, and... I mean, it, it wasn't, you know, you, won't, you wouldn't add it to your list of 10 great speeches that you've, that you've ever analysed. This is on YouTube. No, it's not. Nah. No, no, it's annoying. I know, it's very annoying. But so I was in a debate on this house believes that patriotism tends towards the good or something like that. And obviously I was, I was speaking for the motion. But I hadn't prepared um, on the way up, and and as I, as I um, I went to, uh, I, I walked from the from the the train station to this pub where my when my son was with his with some of his mates, and he was he was, he doesn't normally go to the debate, but he as an act of generosity towards his old old man, he was going to turn up later, and and see me, and he said, Dad, Dad you better be good, you better be good, and. Uh, I said, well, you know, I'm just going to be me. He said, no, you, you've got to prepare. You've got to prepare. I, I, I don't want you to, don't, don't want you embarrassing me. Uh, and I said, well, what do you want me to say? He said, well, you've got to think about the, you've got to think about the premise. You've got to, got to think about, um, 
you know, patriotism, we, you've got to think about what the enemy are going to do, what the other side are going to do. They're going to talk about nationalism. They're going to, they're going to try and paint nationalism as the same as patriotism. And, and you've got to anticipate this. And you've got to come up with a counter, otherwise you're going to lose. And he, he was, of course, absolutely right. I mean, he, 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 he was... So um, so I got back to my hotel room and I, and I, I just Googled quickly sort of patriotism, nationalism, and, and I saw that George Orwell had written the last word on this. So I... I read the George Orwell essay and I thought, yeah, I've, I've, I'm made. But basically my speech was, I was I was completely winging it most of the time. I talk, in fact, I talked mainly about tea and the importance of a good cup of tea and about, about how properly made and stuff. And luckily the, 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 the audience at Durham that night was quite, was quite generous and quite up for my, for my digressions. Um, but we won, by the way, we won massively. But somebody, somebody explained to me afterwards, somebody had been, at school with with my son and he said um the difference between you and your son is that he is an Etonian and all Etonians want to do is win they're they're trained to win that that that's that's their their goal whereas you were more interested in just kind of Larking about and taking the piss, and 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 th- there were there were indeed moments in the evening where I was in da- I went for jokes that were in danger of losing me the audience. But 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 you know, for example, there was there was a, there was a kind of there was a girl. I, it was it was it was rather cruel. Um, she she said that um, she berated me for my for my. She said, "You know, you say that your remarks are are, are harmless. That, your, that English patriotism is, is is harmless and 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 um and, and a good thing, but actually, I heard in your in your tone some disparaging remarks about other countries. And she said, when I was growing up in 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 Europe, and the, you know, I, I blah blah blah, and and I couldn't resist saying, well, well, maybe the fact that you were brought up on the continent is why you don't get English." banter and humor and i thought well f- fair game she 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 provoked me and and she she must be destroyed but but it was it was mentioned to me afterwards that perhaps actually i was in danger of losing the kind of the middle ground of the audience who might think that i was unfairly picking on her now if i were thinking like a cynical etonian you know born to born to wit trained from from the age of what 13 to rule the country um i i would have played a more diplomatic game like Boris yeah well maybe that's it he's Newtonian yeah well exactly that's it this is the thing I wonder whether uh, whether I've created a monster by, by educating my son there or well uh, it's too late to worry about no, that but, but, it's, but yes <sighs> it's made me realise actually that I used to have a hang up about not having been to Eton but actually I'm really happy about being being a, a a Mulvernian and and just not this is a characteristic of Mulvern by the way but it's just like being my own man and just being sui generis and 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 be going for the piss taking and the and the frivolity rather than always just trying to trying to play the winning game. Now uh, we're almost back to where we started. Trump, you see, doesn't play the when well, he does play the winning game. But he actually doesn't seem to give a sh- shit who likes him. He just goes ahead and does what he needs to do. Yeah, well, yeah, up to a point. I mean, I think I think he, he got he got a lot of pushback from from certain sections of the White House, not le- not least from Ivanka over the climate change thing. You know, there's there's a definite faction in the in the White yes, House led is. by Jared Kushner and and uh, 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 Ivanka. Um, who 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 have bought into the green narrative and 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 they they go to their Democrat dinner parties and and they don't like the idea that there's going to have a red team blue team as advocated by Will Happer. That's that that's that would I mean, that would have been wonderful. There never has been a debate. There's never been a proper debate well, of that, any sort. You see, and if anyone's going to make it happen, it's going to be Trump. And I I just I hope that in his second term he does two things, at least two things. One is he totally destroys. Um, the the swamp the the comey the the, the the all the corrupt cia cia people all, all the, the department of justice all the hillary cronies i mean you know hillary should be behind bars she won't be behind bars but i think 
there's a lot of people who sh- who really should. Um, I don't know what Roger Stone is doing behind bars. I really don't. I mean, the, the, this. Uh, I worry sometimes about America, for all its kind of veneer of civilization, that it is actually a banana republic. Some some of the some of the kind of injustices that go on there. Um, but I do hope that he 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 really does drain the swamp and 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 punish the wrongdoers from the Obama Obama era. I mean, that was disgrace. Uh, and the second thing is that I hope he he takes on the green blob. He needs he needs to demonstrate that actually there are serious scientists who are sceptical about climate change. If and he could with make good a reason. proper debate happen, I mean, one of the things that started me getting suspicious all those years ago, the debate is over. And I said, what debate? When was there a debate? I don't remember, don't remember I like the debate. that line. That's good. And if he could just have a debate, not say... I am going to steamroll all of this and 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 da 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 da, da yeah. which is kind of the way he's operated in the in the past, but say okay, let's have a really good, well organised debate, and we'll have speeches from you lot and speeches from you lot because they won't. They, I mean, Tony Heller has offered to debate anyone. They won't come forward. No, well, I wouldn't want to debate debate Tony Heller. I mean, he's 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 good. He really knows his stuff. He does. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he doesn't. Trump doesn't actually have to do much other than just facilitate that, yeah. make that happen. Yeah, yeah. Would it help? God knows. No. Um, right. Well, I think I think we I think we've, we've had a good innings. I um, think we have. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, you're, uh, I'm glad so, I stopped by. You're listening to the Delling Pod with me, James Delling Pod, and my very special guest, Brian Robinson, aka Brian Retor, because he he <laughs> trains in rhetorical skills. Um, what's your assessment of, of the, my rhetorical skills in this? Um... Stunning. Thank you. I, I'm sitting here wrapped in awe. Good, that's what I like. I like wrapped in awe. Yeah, good. All right. Bye. Bye.